The Ghanaian Times this morning says, don't lose touch with grassroots. Kufo advises NPP. Ghana most peaceful in West Africa. President celebrates. Urges uh, Ghanaians to maintain it. 43 killed. 203, uh, 202 injured in road crashes. December 24, uh, January 1. That's the duration. SIM cards re-registration. Hundreds besiege telco centers as deadline approaches in March. Was on the back page. It says, um, Electroland Ghana gives to stars and stars lose to Algeria in trial March. The Daily Guide this morning says, Nigel Gazy hot over TikTok girl. Five highway policemen interdicted. Power abuse claims. AG rubbishes are to forcing. 7% pay rise for public workers. And the Daily Guide this morning Base pay up for public workers. Boku chieftaincy uh, clashes. Accused persons denied bill. Constitution day tomorrow. Build on gains. Governance experts. What's on the back page? Algeria punished Ghana 3-0 for costly errors. And GFA beefs up Black Stars technical team. My guest this morning, Dennis Miracle Support, is a former MC for the Ekapim North Municipal Assembly. Also, Godwin Eduji Tamaklo is here on the ticket of the NDC. He's uh, a lawyer, member of the legal team, and also communication team of his party. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Johnny. Great, 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 great. How's the Thursday morning going? Uh, it was okay. How's your Christmas and your New Year? Oh, alive and well. Very good, chill. <laughs> I see. Johnny. Yes, sir. Um, the Happy New Year. Mm. to the cherished listeners and uh, viewers of uh, TV3 mm. uh, for them being part of this conversation the whole of 2021 mm -hmm. is our hope that in 2022 they will be with us without right. them we are not mm. and uh, I want to encourage you on your journey's bite mm. to continue um, you see in all democracies mm. what has always helped them to grow is the ability, as it were, to call leadership. And they can't even put it in a better way. You see, the Ocha Sano, then Achia. So, what it means is that where a government has a lot of paid propagandists and hype men, you need people who can be watchmen. Who watches the watchman? So on this note, I would encourage your platform to continue the journey's bite. Let me also do this quickly. Uh, today happens to be the birthday of um, a man who is so dear to me, mm. my boss, the Honorable Dr. Dominic Akrotinga oh, okay. Aene, the MP for Borga East. Today is his birthday, mm. so I want to use this platform to wish him a uh, uh, birthday, happy birthday. Okay. And again, Dr. Randy Abe, right. as you pointed out, great man. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look quickly at the um, first issue. The schools have uh, reopened and there's a no vaccination, no entry um, requirement out there. Play the SOT so we can get a, a fair idea what it is and we can have the conversation. So I'm currently at the Accra Girls so Senior High School. So how do you manage yes, it? Because school has reopened. We've seen a few parents trooping in and out with their wards, although not too many of them have arrived yet. Uh, from information we've gathered, there's not uh, any COVID vaccination checks uh, going on here. According to the security men, they have been given orders by the officials of the school not to speak to anyone, and they are not allowing us to speak to parents as well. Our next stop was the St. Thomas Aquinas Senior High School. This is a section of St. Thomas Aquinas students sitting right here. Uh, they just came back from their break. From what we've gathered, there's no checks on COVID vaccination card, which means uh, that no vaccination, no entry policy has not yet been implemented. But we've been told that majority of the students were vaccinated before they went on break. We vaccinated our students some two weeks before we left. But even that, it was with their parents' permission. So that is what we were asked to let them do. So those who said they wouldn't, we couldn't uh, force them. Uh, so with the no card, no entry, it hasn't come to us yet. Because some of our students are below 15. Uh, so, but we haven't had any directives. Personally, I'm vaccinated. Um, there was a full week where the vaccine team was here so 
let me say yeah, about half the population of the students got vaccinated. Mm. Yeah, it went on smoothly. It was a similar situation at the Laboni Senior High School. I've seen a few students trooping in while authorities refuse to speak to me on record, but they tell me that they have not received any official document on the no vaccination, no entry policy. However, they say that about 95% of their students were vaccinated before they went on break. But not all high schools had reopened. Officials at the Ghana Education Service were, however, unavailable to give answers on when documents on the policy would be officially handed over to the schools. Judith Awachitando, TV3 News, Accra. And as Judith reports there, so uh, schools officially are also public uh, places, but they don't have that, uh, uh, you know, directive as we speak. Dennis, um, the, the fight against COVID-19 and what we just saw, um, some are vaccinated, some obviously are not vaccinated, but they are going to mix together and to learn together. What do you say about the fight in good the schools? Mm. Very warm good morning to, to you and um, our cherished viewers. Mm -hmm. And good morning to my brother, Edwige. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. And um, good morning to all the chiefs and people of Africa mm. I I think that this issue of COVID-19 and vaccination is something that all of us, you know, as, as, as a people, mm -hmm. must come together to you know, advocate for and, and ensure that everybody gets va vaccinated to, to, to protect the other. I, I understand that some people have concerns, even in my own extended family. Mm -hmm. I've had calls to have discussions with them. They've raised their own issues because mm -hmm. you see, there are so many conspiracy theories moving, mm -hmm. moving around. Every day you open your WhatsApp mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you are reading from one doctor in the Americas, mm -hmm. another doctor in the Mexicos, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that. And I think these are very genuine concerns if people have to raise. But ultimately, what we all need to understand is that the um, Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service has the ultimate responsibility to ensure that the health concerns of our citizens you know, are, are fully catered for. Mm -hmm. And I do not believe that there's any state that would want to introduce any form of um, health solution that would wipe out their citizens mm -hmm. or in any way incapacitate mm. their citizens. So I am one person that always look out for what the Ministry of Health, what the Ghana Health Service I is see. saying. And once they give the clearance and approval for some of these things, then it's a go for me. I mean, I have always said that how many of us really have taken time to look into the content of all the malaria drugs that we take, all the several vaccines that are given to our kids mm -hmm. and even given to us, you know, at birth and all of that. I, we understand that this is a, no, this is a new, you know, experience, um, which is global. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of these things are likely to come up. But I am an advocate for vaccination. I encourage that everybody get vaccinated. My only concern with the senior high schools at this point is if, if, if we're saying that if you're not vaccinated, then you cannot, you know, mm -hmm. enter the premise then um, are we making the vaccine points or, or centers available, available at, the at, the, mm -hmm. at the school? So that at least if, for whatever reason, I haven't been able to do it at home, when I get to the school, I cannot make a choice, mm -hmm. even if I have to call my parents. They, they, had, they had some two weeks before they go home yeah. to do that with the permission of their of parents. The parents. Some yeah. of them you know, and, and decided the other, not to. Exactly. And the, the other issue which I agree you know, perfectly with, with with the Minister of Health. And I mean, there are other lawyers who have raised concerns, but it's, it's still up for, for discussions mm -hmm. and, and what have you, is that, listen, the state has a responsibility to protect all of us. And the state is saying that one of the ways in ensuring we can fight this pandemic mm -hmm. is to have everyone vaccinated. That's right. If we should wake up one day and everyone is vaccinated at the same time, then we are reducing the, the capacity of the virus to spread across. Herd immunity. Exactly. What it means is that mm -hmm. if you decide not to get vaccinated and I decide to get the vaccine, then you are putting me at risk. And so if the state says that, okay, you have a right to say you will not take the vaccine, but if you decide to take that right, then we also reserve the right to prevent you 
from accessing certain facilities mm -hmm. that belong to us as a state. I think it's a fair point. And so if you are a parent who says you will not allow your child to get vaccinated, mm -hmm. then you probably have to provide home tuition for your child. Because if you, my child is vaccinated as we speak and she's in school, and if your child decides not to get the vaccine and comes to school, then she is going to put my child at, at very high risk, which, which I think is, is unfair to me, mm -hmm. who has decided to comply by, by the state. So there are two things here. Let's continue to advocate. Mm. Let's continue to educate. Mm. Let's continue to erase all the doubts and answer all the legitimate questions by people who have concerns mm. with the vaccine. But, and then mm. let's make the vaccine available. But, but right them. now, the, the schools are reopening. And like you saw in the report, the directive has not got into them. Um, the assistant headmaster at uh, Aquinas was bold enough to have spoken to us. The others didn't want to speak to us. Um, how long before the directive gets to them? Because I, they have to manage their affairs from, from where they sit. I, I think this is, this is something that the Ministry of Health, if this morning they are hearing this mm -hmm. and watching this, should take up, you know, um, um, seriously. Because yesterday I, I, I saw a lot of the students um, around Manfrey, mm -hmm. you know, going to their various schools. Right. McGee, Sebri Girls, mm -hmm. School, mm -hmm. and what have you. They're already there. You know, and this one, I'm sure a lot more would would, we'll join, would, them. would join them. So if they don't have the the the, the directive, then it's it's, it's it's very much concern. Mm. Unless maybe the Ministry of Health is saying that well, um, whatever directive they put on paper, the senior high schools were not part. Okay, I haven't seen the letter. Right, but I think if they haven't done it, they, they mm. should, as a matter of agency, I send this you. send this across across to the school. Because if you look at the numbers, Johnny, mm. I think. The current variant spreads even way faster. That's right. Than 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 and and some of us have been victims of of this of this virus mm. not once not mm. twice and then we know how how the effects can be devastating. Council, schools have reopened. Covidly speaking, what do you say? Yes, um, as you are aware, we are facing a pandemic. There's no indication when this uh, pandemic um, will be phased out. Um, yesterday, reading news item, I understand that they have um, either uncovered or discovered another variant, mm -hmm. and um, scientists are working on it. What is also not in doubt is that um, this pandemic situation, um, governments led by Mr. Kufado, mm -hmm. um, the conversation around a pandemic is rather one that, for me, mm. is giving an avenue for government officials to rather profit, rather than look at really handling. Look, if you read several of the president's statements, he actually promised that by December 2021, he was going to get 20 million Ghanaians vaccinated. It was actually in October. Yes. And then official, it was moved to yes. December. Official government record today clearly shows that so far we have done about two point something million vaccination, right? Now, the, the, the regrettable part is where, and, and I want to put it this way, before vaccine, how were we treating students? Mm. Because if I recall, we allowed the schools to reopen. In fact, we allowed a new voters register to be compiled even when COVID was at its peak, right? I recall vividly the conversation then that secondary school people ought not to be allowed to go back to school because of COVID. Mm -hmm. At that time, government needed them to go and register for the new voters register. So they were allowed in school. By that logic, simply by that logic, if we could allow them in school when there was no vaccine, what then is the medical justification now to say that if they are not vaccinated, they should not go to school? And How were we able to contain new, them? New variants has come. Please. It is the same COVID. Mm. How did we allow them? Even when it was novel, we never understood it. We allowed them in school for the purposes of voters' registration. At the time when there was so much uncertainty about it, why is it that today mm. the same people are now saying that without vaccination, you will not be permitted to be in school? You see, 
let us be consistent in the conversation. I, am, I, I strongly believe that, yes, of course, if you have a public health concern, mm -hmm. right, it is incumbent on public health officials to ensure that you do not get other people, quote-unquote, infested. But there's also uh, public uh, hesitancy. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. That so is, even that, though the vaccines are sitting there, people are hesitant. Because the very scientists who are supposed to encourage us, right, to go for the vaccine, mm. they, are, they are speaking double, like there's double speak. Mm. Today, the Anthony Fajis of our world will say so, so and so tomorrow, and the anti-vaccine people will come with a different conversation. So even ordinary persons are beginning to have a certain doubt. Mm. One, some even believe that when they take it, they will turn zombies and what have you. But there are several, over some million of people who have taken it and they are working. You, you understand? Mm. So it is the scientists themselves that have not helped. Again, I would encourage as many people who want to take it voluntarily mm. to do that. Okay. I would also encourage that it is not a substitute for not putting on your nose mask, not observing the protocols, because that is how we handle it in the initial stages. So I strongly believe that you can still have the kids in the schools and ensure that they comply with the protocols strictly. Because if not, then what was the justification then in allowing these kids to go to school when there was no vaccine? The same logic should apply. Okay. Yesterday, the NDC held a press conference um, regarding the benchmark values. You do know that it's been uh, held on until uh, today, because tomorrow is the 7th. Um, Guta had raised some concerns about its implementation. You know that Guta and the, the Ghana uh, uh, what, the Industrial uh, Association, uh, they, they had also raised a few concerns. Take a listen to the NDC's Director of Communications, or communications officer, I should say, Sami Jemfi, uh, on, on this. And then there's, there was also a reaction by GIFF, and then we'll come back to the studio and have a conversation. Government in April 2019 introduced a 30% benchmark discount on imported vehicles and 50% on general goods. We are looking at increasing revenue. But to do so, we cannot be uncompetitive between Ghana and our next door neighbors. That, will, that is just shooting ourselves in the foot. So, to reduce the incidence of smuggling and enhance revenue, the benchmark delivery values of imports will be reduced by 50%. However, for vehicles, the reduction will be 30%. But in a turn of events, government and... Bawumia MPP government to reverse benchmark value discounts on selected imported goods effective yesterday, 4th January 2022. The reversal of benchmark value discounts is a draconian policy which will adversely affect the living conditions of all of us, irrespective of our social backgrounds and political affiliations. The National Democratic Congress proposed some solutions which they say should be championed by government. Any policy that seeks to increase import duties and ultimately the prices of goods will lead to more hardships in the country. The sensible thing for government to do under the circumstances, if they are genuinely minded to support AGI and boost local production, is to reduce the cost of doing business. So you had the vice president and you had uh, Mr. Sami Jenfi as, as well. Uh, Council, because this is yours mm -hmm. from your phone, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, you seem opposed to government's decision to say, look, I gave you this, I've reviewed it, we have gotten here, I want to take it back. You seem opposed to that. Why? Why is that? Okay. You see, um, the reason why we are opposed to this new year gifts of hardship from Mr. Akufado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to the good people of Ghana is very simple. Ordinarily, when you listen to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, when this policy was first introduced, his 
reason for that is that one, it was to allow us to be competitive mm -hmm. within the sub region. Two, to enhance revenue. And he makes the point that by this policy introduction, it was going to increase trade volumes. Those were the assumptions. Question. Today, as we speak, have we become competitive to allow for this reversal? Two, have the trade volumes increased? Said that today, government is willing to have a reduction in the trade volumes. Three, when governments say that we want to enhance revenue, has this government demonstrated the capacity to account for even the revenue that they have generated so far? And so, when you look at the deceptive nature of this administration, taking the people of this country for granted, then there's nothing else we can do than to associate with the good people of Ghana in opposing this policy reversal. And the reason is simple. Look, Johnny, look at the items on which this policy is going to you know, have effect. Mm. Indomie, even for kids, they are not spared. The government says we want to produce here. No, no, I'm, I'm, look. Before you do such a thing, you must have the existing supply infrastructure before you do that. Because if not, it will create supply rigidities. And eventually, because there's already demand for it, the end result will be increased prices. Two, mosquito quail for our rural communities. Even mosquito quails were not spared. Condoms and all pharmaceutical products not spared. Spare pass, not spared. And if you recall, mm. the 2017 budget, this is a government that said we're going to reduce, to the extent that our brothers in Abosu Okan went on rampage, excited today, this government is back with imposition of greater hardship. Sugar, cement. Mm. So if this thing is going to happen, know that the cost of building is going to increase. Sanitary parts, machete for our farmers. What, and thankfully myself and uh, Miracle here, we are from very rural areas, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We will have family members that farm. They need machetes. That is what government has decided to do. Rice. And you see, I have listened to the counter argument that, oh, we need to support local industry. That's right. As of 2022, uh, 2020, sorry, mm. government or Ghana's import bill on rice is getting to $1 billion. We do not have the local capacity to meet this demand. How are we encouraging them? Yes, that encouragement is there. I know a lot of friends, MPs and others, mm. they are all farming in the north, the Bosa mm. area. They are mm. farming rice. But the, the capacity today cannot meet the demand. So you cannot just do a policy reversal as sharp as this. Not only that, if we are talking about even sugar, mm -hmm. how many Ghanaian companies produce sugar? So the, assuming that the policy rationale is to ensure that local industry, this is not what you do. In any case, this is a government that has abandoned the Commander Sugar Factory for obvious partisan political reasons. You understand? Cement, clinker, and all of the things that are used in this conversation, you have reversed it. And the, the, the end result is that as we speak today, this policy reversal is going to ensure almost 30% increases in the price over 40 household items. I mean, how can a government be this wicked and insensitive? The government needs money as well. Now, you see, Does the I, government know? I have heard this conversation mm -hmm. that government needs money. That's right. Government needs money. See, from 2009 mm -hmm. to 20. 16 when the NDC left office. The overall volume of financial resources available to that government or administration was a little in excess of 
247 billion Ghana cities. We have built at least just a work here, the hospital, the uh, Greater Accra Regional Hospital, mm. popularly called Ridge Hospital. At least we did that. The interchanges. Johnny, as we speak, no government in the history of this country had gotten enough financial resources than the Akufuado Baumia administration. As we speak, this government alone had gotten 461 billion Ghana cities in five years. Just in five years. In terms of tax revenue alone, minus what will happen this year, 157 billion Ghana cities. If you add cocoa, timber receipts, and everything together, this government is making in excess of 221 billion Ghana cities. If you take monies borrowed together, and if you ask them, what do you have to show for that? They will ask you free SHS. Johnny, free SHS from September 2017 to date had cost the taxpayer a little over 7 billion Ghana cities. So even if you take the 7 billion, which is the bill for free SHS, from 400 and 61 billion. Mm. How much is left? This government is spending the money on consumption. Consumption, 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 but consumption. But started. That, that's, a, that's been our problem. I mean, no, salaries but, no. and wages. Uh, granted, mm. granted. But Dr. Mahmoud Baumia mm -hmm. did a, uh, one of his lectures at Central University. In that lecture, he said, look, it was unthinkable. And that it was the mark of incompetent management of the economy for a government to spend nine billion Ghana cities on interest payment and amortization. These were the things he said. Today, as we speak, in 2021, the government led or having this economic management team led by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia spent 35 billion Ghana cities on interest payment and amortization. That is the scary nature. So your money is not going into infrastructure. It is going into interest payment. Okay. Now catch it. Quickly. Catch Rap it. Rap yeah, so Dennis can come in. Catch yeah. it here. When you have a finance minister who has his own company advising him on how much he borrows, when he goes for euro bond, his own company gets commission because it is a transaction advisor to him. That finance minister will have a huge appetite in borrowing more. And once he borrows more, his company gets, and incidentally, he and his deputy, now uh, uh, Minister of State, Dubai. one has a company called Data Bank, who obviously a beneficial owner. The other one has a company called Blaster Holdings, and the two companies are advising these two persons within the finance. The immorality, the immorality is shocking. Okay. And, and, and you see, Johnny, there is no watch on this government. Mm. And, and, and you see, you why, a, do, why do you say there's no watch on this government? There's no watch. CDD has been talking. You have been talking. CSOs you see, have been you see, talking. You see, media has been asking questions. That's watchful. Parliament has oversight responsibility. You see, well. when, 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 for instance, the Catholic Bishop Conference, mm -hmm. in all honesty, came out with a verdict on how this government is fighting corruption, mm -hmm. among other things, government assigns came out attacking the churches. Now, I remember Yabuabia <coughs> Samoa said, bring further and better particulars. At that time, when Yabuabia Samoa said it, he knew that the Auditor General's report for 2020, December 2020, mm. had indicated that the level of financial irregularities alone mm. was in excess of 12.8 billion Ghana cities. So his now, question was out of place? Or no, it, yeah, exactly. He's, what it means is that he, I mean, he never... If you, you are the one alleging, so you must prove. No, that is what I'm saying, that the Auditor General's report mm. was not generated by the Catholic Bishop Conference. Now, listen to this carefully. No, no. You, you yeah, have to step down for If you listen to this carefully, in 2016, 
the volume of financial resources mm. was a little in excess of 700 billion Ghana cities, uh, like 700 Ghana, uh, million Ghana cities. Mm. Now, Johnny Cardi, at that time, Mr. Akufado promised that he was going to protect the public purse. Now, when this protector of the public purse came, the level of financial irregularities moved from 700 million to 12 billion. So what it means is that he had basically swallowed the public purse. Okay. And that, for me, is the scorecard. Dennis, there is no other way out. No justification for this bringing this scorecard matter up again. Dennis, it's obvious that the NDC <laughs> is opposed um, to what government intends to use to perhaps rake in some revenue for delivery of the public good. And he has given us a plethora of what they think. But... What informed government's decision to, first of all, reverse the reduction of the benchmark values that had been announced earlier and Johnny, enjoyed by Ghanaians, if you will? I mean, anybody who was here in this country in 2019 mm -hmm. would realize that the reaction of the NDC at that time when the government decided to introduce a benchmark values discount is no different from their reaction on the reversal. Mm -hmm. And this leaves all of us confused. In April 2019, when Dr. Baumia actually mentioned the introduction of the discounts on benchmark values for importers, this is exactly what um, Honorable Dr. Atoke Hilford, right? Mm -hmm. the it's a forcing. Forcing, yeah. yes. He's the ranking member on finance. The, on finance for the minority side. In fact, the first comment he made was that the, bench, the introduction of the benchmark values and its discount was an illegality and that Ghana was going to be sanctioned by the World Trade Organization and so they were opposed to it. He opposed that the NDC opposed mm. the introduction of the benchmark values well, in this country and they opposed it vehemently with the same strength and energy that Lawyer Duji is doing this morning. He went ahead to even after opposing it to rubbish and discount the effects of the introduction of the benchmark values and this is exactly what he said. Mm. He said the real impact of the policy per his calculation is 5% on the import value, which will be completely insignificant to the importer. This benchmark valuation will not affect import valuation by 50% or 30%. Mm. The impact per my calculation will not exceed 5%. Even that 5%, well, I don't know how it is going to have any significant effect on how the importer transacts his business. This was Dr. Kissel Atto forcing of the NDC mm. opposing government introduction of benchmark values and its discounts to importers. Government then in 2019 said, listen, we are in competition in the sub-region. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Togo, Benin, Sierra Leone, all these places, they are getting high volumes of port transactions because of the mm. low cost. Of, of their import duties. Mm. And that government believes mm -hmm. that if they should provide some of these discounts mm. to the traders, two things will happen. The volumes will increase, mm -hmm. which will rake in more volume for government. And Guta, at that time, assured government that if they introduce the 50% discount, they were going to reduce prices. Right. It was going to affect prices. Don't you hear? Right. On goods. Now, it has become quite clear that that decision that government took in 2019 was at a cost. A cost to the country, a cost to the state. Mm -hmm. It was at a cost of suffocating and suppressing local industries. How so? That was a cost we were supposed to bear. How so? Because once you reduce mm -hmm. or make it extremely convenient for the importer to bring in goods into the country at cheaper rates, it means then that they become extremely mm -hmm extremely ahead of the local industries in terms of competition. Did government not know this before they jumped That is why I said it came at a cost. <laughs> that, is, that is a decision that government takes. When you are running an economy, you don't run it on static. Mm. You become dynamic. The exigencies of the okay. movements and the times determine the decisions that you take. Okay. I, I, so between, I, I want to understand. No, sorry. I'll come. I'm, I'll I, I'm come sorry. Okay. I want to understand. So government made this announcement and, and took credit for it. What kind of learning and background research went on before the announcement? Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. I, I, I want that information. I'll come down. Let right. me conclude on, okay, on the benchmark. I'll come to Go that. Ahead. So the whole idea of benchmarking mm -hmm. is that, listen, 
somebody brings in this mark at hundred dollars mm. and is paying duty of ten dollars. That's right. Another person brings in the same mark and the person is declaring fifty dollars and paying duties of five dollars. And so you realize that on the market, mm. you have the same importer, you have different importers bringing the same goods but paying different duties. Government says that, listen, moving forward, we are giving you some benchmark values, some indicators. So if you bring in this mark mm -hmm. and your invoice says it is $100 and it is less than the benchmark value, that says $120, you pay $120. Okay. If you bring in the mark mm -hmm. and your invoice says it is $200, clearly it is above the benchmark value, you will still pay the benchmark value of $120. And even that, the duty that you'll be paying on that figure, mm -hmm. government is dashing you 50% of that cost so that you pay less mm. to be able to bring it more. That was the idea. Mm. Now, what has happened between 2019 and 2021 is that now we have companies, local industries and local companies who have capacity to be able to produce some of the things that we are importing and has given discounts to. And this is what the Association of Ghana Industries said. I'm not the one saying it. Okay. These are the local industries who are actually running our industry, the local industry captains. Okay. They said, we pushed, the AGI, they are saying that we pushed for reversal of the benchmark value because we realized it was hitting the local industry. Yes, we appreciate it. And we appreciate what Guta is saying. Mm -hmm. But we need to create local employment. So okay. one key thing. Mm. Local employment, that was one of the costs mm. of introducing the benchmark in 2019 so that we don't have to be importing things all the time. We need to create local employment and grow the industry. The moment we create local industry, especially with after now, after is now in, mm. it's here now, mm. it wasn't there then, now it is here. We need to create the local industry so we can get the quality of local price so that we can get the packaging right, so that we can get off the case to buy the product. And if we cannot compete effectively in Africa, then our cost of production will never come down. Okay. And if we cannot compete effectively, mm. then our cost of production can never come it, down. It, it, and that mm. is a key factor in making sure that our industry can compete globally. It takes, me, it takes me to my question, because I asked you no, a question, I'm, you wanted to compete. I am getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. So you can see I'm building a mm. point. Now, people who produce rice mm -hmm. in Ghana, People who produce rice in Ghana, this is what they're saying. We believe that this policy mm -hmm. is only beneficial to select few traders, particularly big importers of rice, rice and other commodities. While the entire rice value chain in Ghana suffers, the consuming public has not benefited from this reduction in benchmark values because prices of products have not gone down as expected over the past two years since the inception of the policy. And yet... The Rice Millers Association of Ghana have rice available that they can sell to the consuming population of the country, but are unable to compete mm. with the importers as a result of discounts that has been given to these importers. I'm not the one saying it. Mm. These are people who are producing rice that are saying that we have the capacity mm -hmm. to produce the rice to the people. Only that as we speak, these people who are importing the rice mm. are importing it at a very cheap rate. And one of the key indicators, one of the reasons mm. why we are unable to compete with them is because government is facilitating okay. this cheaper so now, now cost answer, of, answer of, my question, of, please. Of doing so that. my question is this. You, you have quoted a couple of people and organizations. I'm saying that you say the introduction in 2019 was at a cost. And I'm asking you, what kind of background learning and research did government do the cost-benefit analysis before announcing this, you know, to the it jubilation is rather, of It is everybody. rather an issue of what kind of progress. No, I'm, no I've asked the question. <laughs> no, no, so don't, don't change my question. No, I'm responding. You, you I'm would responding. have to ask, ask It is an issue of what kind of progress mm. this government has made. And I'll tell you what. No, I'm not, I'm not asking 20, about... No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, responding, I'm responding. I'm not asking about progress. I'm I am, asking about... I am responding. I, I want to understand... No, question. hold on. I want no, to understand... Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, no, no, please. Don't do that. I, I want, I want I to understand... Do do I want to understand government. What was inside government's head when he says in 2019, I want to... And now telling us that it was at a cost. Did government not do the cost benefit? Government clearly indicated what was in their mind. Mm. Increased transaction at the port, 
okay. increase revenue, okay. make it effective, more efficient, more convenient for trade at the port. Okay. That's what government's okay. idea. Now, so now let's talk been. about the results. Now, moving forward, okay. moving forward, them? in 2021, mm -hmm. some of the things that were not available in 2019, for which reason government thought it was important to make it convenient for importers, to be given some relief, mm. have improved. We'll, we'll get we'll get there today. No, now, now let's I look at let's look at sorry let's mm. look at the four pointers you mentioned. Yeah, uh, volumes, revenue, and all of that. Let's look at the results. I mean, it, it came at a cost. Now we're in 2021. We say we want to reverse what we started in. So the first, for me, the first key expectation that didn't happen for which reason I side with government 100 percent is the fact that Guta gave a clear indication to all of us and you're mm -hmm. here that if government gives them the 50 percent reduction they'll reduce prices okay. did they reduce it i don't know they didn't mm. you, they did not reduce prices so if i am giving you a discount so that you give relief to my people and then you enjoy the discount for two years without giving relief to the people should i continue to give you that relief mm. did they increase volumes at the port i don't have the figures i'll not be able to tell okay because but that was one of the i won't be able to tell mm. but for me me sitting here and for every citizen in their homes, their key outlook for the benchmark value reduction for the Guta people was that if you were selling this as 10 Ghana cities, because government has given you 50% discount, mm. you come and sell it at, let's say, 15 cities or mm. 17 mm. cities. If you did not do that, then you don't deserve to continuously have that discount. But, but that was not the only metric. No, there, but that was, was also, one. yes, there was also volumes at the port and the revenue so, inflow. So, so I have told you that. Mm. I don't have the figures for the volumes, but the impact. But, but on you're the communicating city, for government. I don't have it and, here. And convincing. It doesn't all of matter. Us it doesn't matter. Why, I don't have it. Why we should side with government? It doesn't government matter. I don't have it. To to reverse that. I don't have volumes of trade at the port between 2019 and 2020 as a city. Okay. I don't have it. Okay. But what I have mm. is that the key indicator mm. that will have an impact on the citizenry, which was the reduction of prices by Guta, did not happen. Now let me tell you a very funny and interesting thing. Mm. You are saying that government is reversing the, the, the discount. Mm -hmm. And for which reason, as at this morning, you are advocating, and has been advocating since yesterday, that there are going to be price increases. And yet you refuse to tell Ghanaians that when the reduction was given at 50%, there was no price decrease. Now, what kind of mathematics and science and economics is that? Mm. If there was no impact in terms of price reduction when the, when the discount was given, what makes you think? that there will be impact in terms of price hike when the discount is taken back. Do you understand my question? Do you understand my point? <laughs> I am telling you on this set today that there is no data mm -hmm. supporting the assertion by the NDC that prices will go up as a result of removal of discounts because the removal of discounts in the last two years has proven not to have had any direct impact on the prices of goods out there. And the government says, I gave you discounts, mm. so you reduce prices for my people. Mm. If you have refused to give those discounts to the people, I am taking it back. And that is not all. Can, the can last I, can important can I see point. clarification on that? Sorry. So government introduced something in 2019. There was a condition to it. I give you this price cut you reduce prices for the ordinary people. We are in 2021. Governments, if I hear you right, government's reason is that you did not abide by that condition, and so we are stopping this. We are we are reversing. Is that correct? Yes, one of the Great. effects. Yes. Now, one of them. in between 2019 and 2021, what was the monitoring and evaluation mechanism such that if I sell this to you at 80 pesos, and you are supposed to sell it to the people at maybe one CD, and you decide to sell it still at two CDs? and I'm Mr. Government, I'm looking at it. I see you sell it at that price. I take taxes from what you are selling at that high rate. Then, after I've taken all the taxes and everything from you, I come back to come and say, you are the guilty one. Free Is market. government also not guilty? Free market. <laughs> Free market. Mm. All governments can do in the private sector is to facilitate, providing reliefs. It is up to the private sector and the market to lead the way. And that is why governments in conjunction with the local industries, AGI are saying that, listen, all the items except for sugar and cigarettes and ammunition and heavy equipment are all here now in Ghana. In, I can give you the list. In, mention in the, each of the, the products. The, I mentioned the, the company. The quantity that the people and can... The, if, you give the the local, can if you give the local industries that leisure, then they will be able to meet the demand for you. They have said it. They have given That's government a long-term dream. It doesn't, it, you, you may not tell. We start from somewhere. 
I am only telling you today on this set that, listen, I have a list of 278 businesses, mm. factories, mm. 108 of them that are operational now. That has all of these products. At what capacity? That's the question. When they get the capacity that government is giving them by ensuring that they do not have undue competition from importers, they will be able to show up and, and, and meet okay. our supply, so, our demand. So, so let's, do a basic one. They, let's, let's do a basic one like Mosquito Coil. Okay, I'll show you. Mosquito Coil. Uh, what is the company? What is their capacity? Let me give you. Let me give you. What is the present uh, oh. demand demand capacity? I have already responded. Mm. I have already responded that when it comes to capacity and the and the ability to meet the supply, the AGI have already answered that. They said, "Listen, we need you to remove the undue competition and we meet the the demand." So that's understand that long term, short term, it, it, can, it may be short, it may be medium, it may be long. But you need to start from somewhere. That's how all industrialized companies develop. Okay. If you go to Asia, mm. they had to take such decisions, block competition, prevent foreign inf infiltration to ensure that they grow. They had to feel the pinch at some point temporarily, mm. Mm. but in the long term, they are reaping the effects now. And so if we want to grow as a country, now mm. let me give you. Should, should government there's a be doing this con concurrently, for example? You know what? Should, should government not be doing this uh, uh, suspension of benchmark value and that is why you know the benchmark value you know the benchmark values government has not removed it on all products mm. they were 81 mm. the government has removed it only 44 okay so it tells you that government has given the, okay. that thought G give me the the, the, the company so it's okay. called mm. btex okay it's called btex enterprise limited and they pro produce what mosquito quails okay and give me more what capacity I, i've told you the capacity issue i will not be able to respond to you <laughs> but then if you are if you are making Why a you strong, if you're making a strong argument but i've responded to that already no i'm saying if you're making a strong argument to say that because if the and you force, said the products are not here i am telling you that okay. out of the 44 list mm. it is only three products or four okay. sugar cigarettes um ammunitions, uh, ammunitions mm. and heavy equipment that do not have local industries championing it okay. and these are local industries that are being facilitated between the agi mm -hmm. and government so you see there is a deliberate so are you suggesting to me mr and mr Bwaji, that for example if we if we take the benchmark value of mosquito coils this company you just mentioned yes. btex can supply us exactly. mosquito coils exactly in full capacity yes okay because the agi have clearly indicated what is preventing them to be able to compete and to be able to deliver i hear you belamundi Welcome. Thank you so much. You want uh, mosquito coil? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see what people are saying, by the way. So this one says, I'm happy to see Johnny back in the studio. Welcome back and keep Thank the you fire very much. burning. Thank you. Good morning, TV3. Where are we going as a country? As, a youth, uh, as youth of this country, I think our leaders have failed us. But for NAPCO, I now believe that this is a scam. That's Yahaya Monk. Karigu, Johnny's Bites, Ghanaians don't know how to thank you for the good work you're doing for Mother Ghana. That's from Peewee Inside Togo. Thank good you. morning, Johnny. This is Prince Nasara Isahak from Vogu in the northern region. All northern mm -hmm. residents are encouraging you to keep on keeping on with Johnny's Bites. It's speaking for the voiceless. My greetings to all NDC MPs and parliaments, especially Dr. Hamza Adam, Kumbungu Constituency MP. Good morning, TV3. Simply put, government is never consistent with this COVID-19 Delta variant and Omicron containment. They do exactly the opposite of what they ask Ghanaians to do. COVID surged after voters' registration and campaign. Delta variant and Omicron surged after their rally and conferences. Governments should not blame innocent Ghanaians. As for the policy reversal, it's a no-no. Ghana is really broke, but don't squeeze us to death. Uh, get alternatives. That's from Victor Rapture Ho. Um, Ghanaians voted for the MPP because they claimed they were better managers of the economy. If things are bad today, Dennis and his MPP uh, members should fix the mess and stop the blame game. That's Osman Bukurizung in Tamale. Good morning, Johnny and TV3. Taxation is one of the ways in building a strong economy, but the major challenge in Ghana is using the tax efficiently. This NPP government is using our tax as well. So many roads have been constructed, factories, classroom blocks, etc. Let's trust in the government and pay our taxes, and Ghana will be a better place. That's Master Planner Junior from Kintampo. Uh, Baumia Economics will kill Ghana. Today, E-Levy. Tomorrow, Benchmark Values. We don't know what's coming next. Sad to put our destiny in the hands of con politicians, such as the President and the V. From Sule Tamale, good morning, Johnny. Good morning to you. Boku Chief Tansi clashes. Chiefs are appointed or nominated by a certain ancestral trace or lineage, which stands to reason that it is not anyone that's, uh, not just anyone can be appointed or nominated as a chief, which also means that the entire Chief Tansi institution is an epitome of love, peace, 
unity, togetherness, and understanding. My point here is that Chief Tansy Institution must not associate itself with any form of violence or misunderstanding, which may lead to clashes. Aaron Babako Kokomisa from Latabi Okoshi. Good morning, TV3. Matthias from Tempani. Johnny, I've been following your bite all this while, and I realize that it doesn't matter when you started doing it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. What you're doing is fair and biased, honest and based on facts and sincerity. I salute you, my mentor and role model. Honorable Dennis Miracles Abwaje. Okay. Good morning, Johnny. I tuned in late, but I rightly support what the man in the smock is saying. That's Lawyer Duji. I don't think this mandatory vaccination is the best thing to do. The students were allowed into school when the COVID was at its peak just to register for the Ghana card and the voter ID card. Those students who are not vaccinated should be allowed into school. Abraham from Asesua. And good morning, Johnny. The no vaccine, no entry policy will not solve any problem because according to experts, when you vaccinate, you are as equal as the unvaccinated. So we must try and educate the public very well. But Johnny, listening to the president some time back, he said the Mahama administration had borrowed more than any other government since Nkuma. And now that has changed. Uh, he's tripled the borrowing in only five years by 222 mm. billion Ghana cities and nothing to show for King Oruma from Adenta Oyarifa. That's it, Johnny. Thank you very much, Bella Mundi. Grateful that you could join us. Um, the, a few messages as well were sent to me. There's somebody from GRA, uh, a colleague of mine from GIG at the time, says, Johnny, please, what Miracles is saying is not exactly what it is. Benchmark value is simply the international value used by the World Customs Organization. So government just said, if you quote wrongly or misquote, we will use the international rate and then give you either 50% or 30%. Oh, so to say if your import is over a figure, then you are giving benchmark. It's not accurate. Uh, Senior Senator Yeah also says, uh, what happened was that government decided to review the benchmark values to cover every single item imported into the country at the port. So, example, if you imported electricals, every item in the electrical item uh, in the container is benchmarked, and this led to high cost of import duties at the port. And Guta and other importers began to complain. It was to assuage the pain of importers that government reduce the benchmark values to avoid smuggling and maximize revenue. That's uh, uh, what we have in there this morning. Uh, concluding thoughts? Yes, uh, thoughts you see, Johnny, uh, miracle raised an issue and uh, ought to be addressed. Mm -hmm. You see, these uh, persons who speak for this government, they have a way of always hiding their incompetence, ineptitude. Listen, he said, oh, when the benchmark in 2019 happened, mm. The Guta people did not reduce their prices. Such analysis mm. is terrible. It's terrible because mm. we do know that duties are not the only determinant of the prices of commodities. You have incompetently managed the, <laughs> the, the, the dollar. As we speak today, they bring their Bruniwawu, they bring their spare parts, all other items from abroad, basically. How much is the dollar CD relationship today? So whereas duties may be, quote unquote, reducing, the reduction, even by way of foreign differential losses alone, mm. who do you think they should pass it on? It comes back. So as you were talking about 2019 issues about benchmark, the reverse was that the CD was depreciating. And so the foreign differential losses must be passed on to the consumer. So you do a static analysis. No, it should be dynamic. You look at all variables when you are doing this analysis. So you cannot in one breath expect that because of benchmark issue, they should. But the most is, important... Is that, is that not the reason they are asking for us to produce locally so that we can strengthen but the you see, Because but if you, see, you keep importing, it means that you are, you are spending more forex trying to get things in. Johnny, as you were asking him, mm. he could not give you numbers. He only said, though, he mentioned one company producing mosquitoes. As I mentioned, I have 278 of them. I said, no, only I mean, three. Relax, relax. There are only relax. three that are going to the list. Allow him. Calm. That's he's, what I'm saying. He's talking about the figures I asked about. No, he's quoting me. That's no, because, you see, you, you, that's no, hold on. you that's speak for saying. government. Okay. That's what you say. This morning, the underlining assumption in 2019 was to increase volumes. So I expected that this morning, when you were coming here, import volumes. at least you should give us the numbers. But the most important thing is this. We have a situation where this government is asking you and I to burden share with them. 
right? To bite the bullet, to tighten our belt. Our expectation is that a government of this nature should have equal responsibility in tightening their belt. They don't even have a belt hole. So the man is not showing leadership. The president is still living in luxury. The president, the last time, left Accra to the U.S. of A to accept an award by paying $14,000 per hour for 11-hour trip. In and out, 22 hours times $14,000. So if you are telling us that Ghanaians, things are hard, bear with me. We expect that you demonstrate equal responsibility. Now, if you have a government that is so irresponsible with our public finances. Mm. Th that's too short. No, that is it. Look, how in God's name, Johnny, do you justify the 12.8 billion financial irregularity and cash irregularity alone is in excess of 2 billion? How much would this bank match value and things give us from the pots? How much are we going to get? Okay. So that is the scorecard. Thank you. And we need to Thank you. You know, take I, I, this I, I, government Allow Dennis to also have a final bite. Uh, Do, Dennis, yeah, yes. Dennis, you know, Edwin is a brother. I mean, mm. he is a true representation of the future of the NDC. Mm. And he's basically exhibiting what the NDC His are. questions make them Inconsistencies. sense. Inconsistencies. Mm. You came here, mm -hmm. the first comment you made was that the New Year gifts that Ghanaians are getting is increase in prices. Based on the fact that you claim that a reversal on the, the, the benchmark values is going to affect pricing. Then, in your closing remarks, you are telling Ghanaians that import duties are not the only determinant of pricing. And so, we shouldn't have expected Guta to reduce the prices then in 2019. I just, you see the inconsistency. What secondly, inconsistency? secondly mm. you sit here ah, and then the, you talk the about. Please, no, please, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, 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 Number one, you, the NDC, are lying. You are, you are completely lying to the people of Ghana wow. by telling them that there will be price increases because of discounts removal from are the you, benchmark values. You are kidding me. At the same time, we, we are, are telling us, Guta. Can, you, can you please... No, 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 but how do you say that NDC is deceiving Guta? It's unfair. Allow, allow are you him. going to give you me a You mean Guta? They are him. not smart let, enough. Let, let him run. Don't insult this, them. You don't, you so you're making a mess of yourself. You are making a mess of yourself. Don't listen to him. Go ahead. Speak to me. You are making a mess of yourself. Speak to me. Speak to me. Don't insult Guta. Then they speak to me. Counsel, please. Then they speak to me. But it's unfair. Speak to me. Okay. So, the end is contradiction and I wrap up. One. We are saying that the removal of the discounts had no effect. It will be completely insignificant on pricing. That is fact. Number two. This removal of the benchmark discount is to ensure mm. that the AGI and the local industries will be able to have the capacity to produce mm. and to ensure that they employ a lot more people and supply our demand. And at the same time, would have a positive effect on the strength of our, of our, of our, local, of mm. our local currency. Number four, then my final point. Mm. Of all the 44 products that have been listed, mm -hmm. all of them as we speak now, mm. through the AGI and government's collaboration on the one dishes one factory okay. have companies and businesses with I capacity to produce these goods for the people if of I Ghana. Well, so there's no said, effect don't, on us don't as well. analyze statically be dynamic exactly and that would include the exchange rate as yes. well and management of the city perfect that's, that's and, and in said. managing the exchange rate in the city local industry local production would solve that problem I that hear is you. the answer to it Dennis oh, Miracle what do you want what do you want to do you have a good friend his birthday is also today the MP for Sisala West okay Mohammed Superu oh very good. Mohamed Shapiro, happy birthday to yes, you, sir. And Edu Jita <laughs> McClure is uh, a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. Also, Dennis Miracles Abwaje is uh, a former MC for the Kriapim uh, North Municipal Assembly. Happy, happy birthday to Blobi, Dr. Randy Abe. This is from uh, Blobi, Robert Coleman, the rest of Blobi family, from myself as well. A happy birthday also to Erajua Obu. This is from Opari and Flo. And to Mr. Jonathan Syme of the ADB, you are my relationship manager. Happy birthday, Mr. Jonathan Syme. To, also to Mr. Emmanuel Hansen. And a happy, happy birthday to Mrs. Ethel Anoy Awudi of Ho. From your big sister, Alice, her husband, Ray, and her children. Also, a belated one to Dr. Faustina Maku Adipa, a senior nursing tutor at the Kolebu 
N NMTC from Alice, Ethel, Benjamin, and Pius. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. We're coming up with a conversation on NAPCO. The Nation Builders Corps will speak to three of them. They have not been paid since September, October, November, December. We're entering January. We'll talk to them. And then we'll also go to the La General Hospital. It's a bare ground now. Sword was cut for 68 million euros. What is happening there? The MC Reverend uh, Kote Nikwe will be here. We'll have that conversation. Why is it not part of Agenda 111, for example? And how are the people of La, Osu, Teshi, Nungwa, and surrounding areas coping? How is it impacting 37, Rage, and all those places? We'll have that conversation after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>